What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I will be reviewing yet another collaboration beer, this time between the other half brewing company out of both Brooklyn and Rochester, New York, and the Burial Beer Company out of Asheville, North Carolina, and this is their Wangies. So they are calling this an Imperial Rye Cream India Pale Ale, comes in at 8.3% alcohol volume. No IBUs listed in the time of review. This can is approximately one month old. So, full disclosure, I've had this beer before. I actually had it about, almost two years ago, it was like about mm, like 20 months ago, uh, at the Thin Man Brewery in downtown Buffalo, uh, New York. Uh, they actually did a mobile canning release of other half beers, and this was well before the other half Rochester location opened up and they did some mobile canning releases here locally in Buffalo, New York. And I had this on tap, and I also had the extra spicy version, and I really, I really enjoyed both of the versions. Um, when it comes to rye beers in general, uh, especially rye hop Ford beers, uh, they're hit or miss for me. Some I absolutely love and some just aren't for me. I remember enjoying this one, really liked the rye kick that it had in it, but it had like a nice juicy, you know, other half base. So I really dug it. And uh, the fact that I get to try an entire can right now, pretty fantastic. So uh, this is brewed with Amarillo, Citra, Motueka, uh, Simcoe, and YITI hops. And uh, yeah, they're using rye in here. They're using a bunch of oats, a little bit of lactose. That's why they call it Imperial Rye Cream India Pale Ale. And the label is basically a shout out to Buffalo. Wangies is wings. And I don't know how well this would come off uh, on camera, but it's basically chicken wings and celery. Uh, some are dipped in blue cheese, some are not. And uh, they rebrewed this one because they're in Rochester, they're in Western New York. Wings are popular. We call them chicken wings. A lot of people call them buffalo wings. In Buffalo, they call them chicken wings. But uh, you know, it's... Uh, Nice. I really wanted to get the Teku that they had, and they sold out of it like a couple days before I got to the brewery, and I was disappointed because I would have loved the Teku of this. Anyway, let's crack it open, give it a pour. I don't think I've ever had a beer straight from Burial. I've only had collabs with them, so I don't know too much about them other than they are uh, very popular. And I, I don't know if they're straight out hyped, but they definitely you know, get a lot of praise, so cool to try beers from, you know, breweries that I can't get here locally. So yeah, that didn't pour with like a, a huge head, but that, you know, it's orange honey color. It's other half. I just murky turbid has about a thin film of a white head look kind of creamy. Let's see if I can generate a head because man, I didn't pour it super aggressive, but more often than not, I usually get a decent, nah, it's about a half finger. That's the best I'm going to do. Anyway, let's get a nose. Yeah. A little bit of rye spice in there. A little bit of vanilla from the lactose. Getting a lot of like orange. Um, <sighs> orange, passion fruit, white grape. I feel like the Motueka and the YIT hops are singing a little bit more than the Citra, Simcoe, and Amarillo. Uh, in addition to that rye, I'm getting this really nice like herbaceous tone to it. It's not really dank, it's just herbaceous, um, which is nice. Yeah, it smells different. I, I think the rye is just breaking up what like would be a typical like imperial um, oat cream ale from other half. Just like, you know, you get a little bit of vanilla, you get a lot of the juicy fruity components. That rye is really nice. There's like a spiciness between the herbaceousness and the spiciness. It just adds a different complexity to, to this beer. I, I think they're brewing it with, you know, the rye to get a spiciness that, you know, the whole thing is wangies, right? So how to get spice into a beer without it being like a pepper spice rye. Yeah, it smells really good. Let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. That's fucking cool. That's a cool beer. I like that. First things first, you know, I cracked open the can. You saw me pour it. Then usually when I pour a other half beer, they have almost perfected their, their like what they want their carbonation to be, which is usually you pour it even if you pour it relatively aggressive, you end, usually end up with like a one to two finger head. Usually it isn't huge, big. I don't know if it's because of the rye. I don't know if it's because of lactose. This one has a little bit of lost carbonation. It's undercarbed a bit. Body on it, I'd say medium body. So it's a bit thin at 8.3%, which is okay with me. I'd like to see it a little bit bigger though. And the mouth feels soft, smooth, slightly creamy from that lactose and, and all those oats. But again, it's undercarved a bit. The taste though, man. If this carbonation was better, this would this would be really, really, really nice. Um, 
the taste, you get the rye, and it's omnipresent. And it adds just a little nuanced spiciness, like a rye spice that, you know, you picture yourself eating rye bread or whatever the case may be. Um, it has just a little bit of a rye kick to it. There's, a, there's an omnipresent vanilla uh, presence here too. Yeah, there's there's an omnipresent vanilla, like, it's a, again, it's a very subtle vanilla, so it's not huge. It's not giving me like creamsicle vibes or anything, uh, because that lactose always, almost 98% of the time gives me you know, a little bit of a creaminess to the mouthfeel, but also, you know, kicks it up for the vanilla. But what I'm digging about this one is that, that rye, like I said, in the nose is breaking up the monotony of all that like sweetness and, and, and the fruitiness, but I'm still getting a lot of that fruitiness. I'm getting um, more of the, the, like the passion fruit, pineapple, white grape, but then there's really like this fleshy, excuse me, fleshy like mango, honey, excuse me, Jesus. Even though it's not carbonated, I feel like, I guess I'm, there's some carbonation. There's a, like a honeydew melon, um, definitely an orange kick here too. It finishes sweeter. There's almost no dryness or bitterness to this one. So this is a sweeter uh, double IPA. 8.3%, a little bit of warming chest into the stomach, but not on the palate at all. This is fucking really good. This is better than I remember it being. I think when I had it last time, I, my, my palate might have not been completely just, you know, fresh and clean. Um, I think this, I had this one maybe like three or four pours in. But this one on a relatively fresh palate... And just being able to drink more and sit here and think about it, not at a, you know, at a brewery and with a lot of noise and people around and just, you know, taking sips. This one is resonating with me a lot more than when I originally had it. So I'm going to give Wangies from Other Half and Burial, um, give this a high point for uh, 4.25 out of 5. I'm going to go 4.3 out of 5. I was debating whether or not this crosses in the 4.5. I think this would get a 4.5 if the carbonation wasn't lacking. I don't know what happened, uh, but th this definitely, I mean, right now, as you see, there's there's absolutely no head on it. I mean, and I've had so many beers with lactose in it from other half that I don't think that should play a huge role here. Uh, I don't know what the case is, uh, but yeah, it didn't have a big, you know, big crack on it when I opened it and the pour and everything. So it's definitely under, under carbonated a bit. And you can tell on the palate, if this had proper carbonation and mouthfeel like it typically would get from another half beer, this is 4.5 out of 5 all day. Uh, but as is a 4.3 out of 5, still a really good score. If you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it, because I'd be curious to know. I love, I just love the label just because it plays homage to Western New York, to Buffalo with chicken wings. And, you know, that's what we're known for here. Uh, yeah, so price and availability, price on this one, I want to say it was 18 maybe $20 a four-pack, somewhere in the $18, $20 a four-pack, which is appropriate, worth it all day, every day for this beer. Availability brewery only, unless you live in New York and have a local bottle shop that will make a trip to other half. Although I will say this, recently, at the time of this review, a lot of places here locally in the Buffalo, New York area, the surrounding suburbs, the bottle shops are now getting, um, they're getting deliveries of uh, other half kegs. So you might be able to find this one on keg in the Buffalo, New York area or in the Western New York area if you don't go to the brewery at your you know, local favorite bar or uh, bottle shop. Um, I don't know if they'll ever get distribution of cans here. Hopefully they do at some point. But like as far as getting in on draft, you should be able to find this at some point if they rebrew it again. Hopefully they do because it's a pretty damn good beer. I just want to see the carbonation kicked up a notch. So yeah, really damn good beer. Better than I remember it. If you've had this one before, I'll say it again. Let me know what you think about it because I think it's pretty damn delicious and I appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Until the next one, cheers.